this worse. Hello fiber friends. It is time to see if we can have this Turlian spinning wheel shaped object fulfill its true destiny, reach its final form, if it can do what it was meant to do, which is spin yarn. If you are interested in seeing how we transformed this wheel from a spinning wheel shaped object into an actual spinning wheel, then you can check out that video. I will post a link to that in the description down below. I will also post a link to Queen Conk Rare Breed Fibers. She is the source where I was able to get a hold of some Tyrolean mountain sheep wool and I am going to be spinning that on this wheel. I did learn a couple of interesting things about the sheep. Uh, it is a fairly recently developed breed in terms of the history of sheep. It was developed probably after World War II. It's a rare breed sheep. Uh, it, there's, there's not a lot of them anymore. It looks like it was developed by crossbreeding some sheep that were already in the region, of course, and uh, developing this sheep to be a dual purpose wool and meat breed. And I did also find a company making slippers, felted slippers out of this wool. So that's a great use for wool, by the way, to make felted slippers. It's a great project. Maybe we should do that. Um, so it's a good wool for felting apparently and very durable because if it's going to be a slipper and get walked on, it has to be durable. And one other thing I had to add about these sheep, they are lop-eared. They have the long pendulous kind of ears on them. They are so actually adorable. They look like wise old souls and I want to hug them and I want to see them climb up and down up a steep path with their ears all dangling. <laughs> this is the Tyrolean Mountain Sheep Wool and it is already cleaned and prepared into this lovely bat. I love sheep smell. Feels like there's just a hint of the lanolin left in it, which is, that'll be good for the spinning. But mountain sheep tend to be a little more wiry and not, this is definitely not uh, anything like a fine wool. This would probably be something that would be used for a very durable fabric like rug or maybe some upholstery fabric. I believe that would be the intended kind of purpose to this. So here's how we test the staple length. I'm just gonna grab a bit and pull it out and pull it. Ah, interesting. So this is shorter than I expected it to be. With this short staple, I think that we are going to have to have a higher twist and less take up and draft it so that it comes out a little thinner. Let's see how we do. I don't know if I can control all of these things with this wheel because we're just really trying to see if this wheel works. And it's not going to be a precise machine. We know that already. Okay, but let's see what we can, let's see what we can do here. I have this little hook that I'm going to just move along as I need to uh, fill the bobbin. This wheel was set up with a single hook that we had to pull out of there. It wasn't uh, able to move along back and forth, but I did find some historical footage showing some flax spinners in the uh, region where a uh, Tyrolean styled wheel would be found and they had a single hook and they moved it into the different holes as they were spinning. So that was one of those things that I thought, hmm, they must be looking at a real, a real wheel to have figured that out. Something that is interesting to note about this wheel is that the crank on the wheel is backwards. I'll show you what I mean. When a wheel has a curved crank, such as this one, or 
little example there. That's my Canadian production wheel. The crank is meant to be treadled in the direction of the curve. So that means that this is going to go down on the side where the curve aims. This, is, this makes sense. We're gonna go this way. And so because it's going towards the direction of the curve, that means that we're actually going to be spinning with S twist. That's a counterclockwise twist, but that is a hint to let you know if a spinning wheel has that curved crank. Uh, those wheels can sometimes be difficult to ply on because they only really want to spin in one direction. So I have the leader and I'm adjusting. This is a bobbin led wheel. That means the drive band is turning the bobbin over here and the brake is over the flyer. So if I put any resistance on it, it's stopping. Does that mean we have... I think that means we don't have enough tension coming from the drive wheel. So let's see if... There. So I increased tension on the drive band. Let's try again. Ah, now I don't have enough take up on the leader, so let's give it just a little more. There's a lot of creaking and groaning happening, but let's see if we can get some fiber on this wheel. Oh no, it fell off the leader. It was spinning though, it was spinning. <laughs> you're doing it, Wheel, you're doing it. Oh, we're almost there. <laughs> we almost had it on there. Oh no, I didn't attach it to the leader. Well, let's try that again. <laughs> we are spinning. Wow, it's spinning. This little spinning wheel shaped object is spinning. I think um, it is tricky to keep the wheel actually rotating. It wants to stop every time. And that's because there are no bearings on it. It is just metal on wood. <laughs> so, could this handle a huge project? You know, maybe technically it could, but it's uncomfortable. And I feel like I'm having to work really hard to make up for what the wheel is lacking. So it's not the most comfortable spin. And I can feel most of that really has to do with the lack of bearings in the drive wheel. I also feel like the wheel doesn't have the weight that a drive wheel should when they're made out of hardwood and um, especially the wheel behind me is a Canadian production wheel. A lot of those wheels actually have weights in the drive wheel to keep that momentum going. It becomes a flywheel. And this is so small and it's probably most likely made of pine. It's very light. It just doesn't have the weight to keep that momentum going. Uh, and it's a lot of work for my ankle. <laughs> but I am figuring out that it matters where I put my foot on this treadle, which is interesting um, because this treadle is oriented very differently than the treadle wheels that I'm used to. So this is what it looks like for, from the spinner's perspective. And this is how the treadle is set up. And I'm noticing that if I have my foot closer here, it's giving me power, but it's a lot of work. 
And if I come down here, it's less work, right? Because my foot's not having to move the same distance that it does over here. I think that would probably be something that translates accurately to an actual wheel designed with this sort of treadle style. So that was kind of an interesting observation, I think. This is what the yarn is looking like right now. It's very fuzzy. It is yarn. We have success. This wheel is spinning. Uh, it's a little inconsistent. Uh, that's because I feel like I have to keep stopping and getting the wheel to start up again. I'm having trouble tightening down. This is what the tension system is looking like. So I'm having trouble tightening down the tension enough that it doesn't stop the drive wheel. When I have this tightened to where it feels like it should be, it's stopping the drive wheel. And I have cranked up the drive wheel. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's sturdy on there. Uh, the problem is the, I think the problem is the weight and momentum of the drive wheel actually, but that's causing it to have quite a lot of twist, which is okay for this short fiber, but it would not be good just generally for spinning. Our little spinning wheel shaped object has, a, has peaked. It has reached its final form. Uh, but my final thoughts on this are that I think that part of why I was able to spin on this was because I am an experienced spinner. If you are looking for a spinning wheel to learn how to spin, I will have a couple links to some great wheels for beginners down in the description. Uh, those are affiliate links, but you can check those out if you would like. And I would just caution you, if you are shopping for secondhand wheels, Make sure that it can actually spin yarn before you walk away with your purchase. There are just so many features on spinning wheels that are necessary to make yarn and make yarn well. I will be spinning up the rest of this wool on one of my regular spinning wheels uh, because I'd like to just experience this rare breed wool and see what it's like to spin. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Happy spinning.